Kathy Wood is out with a new warning for AI stocks today. This does have potential implications for a stock like Tesla, as Tesla has really been stretched thin for liquidity since all of the money is going into AI stocks, really FOMOing into this area of the markets. Maybe a little bit of a pullback for AI stocks could be a positive for Tesla. We just got Broadcom and Marvell that really failed to impress investors. And we'll go over that here in this video. We have some data coming out tomorrow morning and a big catalyst next week for AI stocks that we'll discuss. Let's start with this warning about Nvidia specifically. And this warning that Kathy Wood is giving, and she's not the only one that is actually warning investors about Nvidia. Nvidia stock has surged 290% in the past 12 months, but Kathy Wood suggested in a letter to shareholders on Thursday that the gain could be at risk. She says, quote, without an explosion in software revenue to justify the overbuilding of GPU capacity, we would not be surprised to see a pause in spending, compounding a correction in excess inventories, particularly particularly among the cloud customers that account for more than half of NVIDIA's data center sales. Kathy Wood said, referring to graphics processing units, competition could intensify as NVIDIA's customers, cloud service providers, and companies like Tesla are designing their own AI chips. Mizuo analyst Jordan Clean said he is concerned about how much the gains in NVIDIA stock have booted, boosted shares of other semiconductor makers. He wrote in a research note Thursday that he is, quote, starting to actually get worried about the persistent gains of chip stocks, specifically citing NVIDIA, Broadcom, and Marvell technology. Quote, stocks do not only go up, and this current investor mentality, which feels nearing a frenzy to get more and more semi-exposure with sell-side targets going higher and higher, starts to remind me of 1999 into early 2000 across tech. Klein said he fears that the continuing increase in chip shares feels a bit unhealthy when other semi-stocks rise in tandem with NVIDIA on no new fundamentals. Overall, Klein says he remains positive on the semi-industry and sees, quote, year-end prices higher versus current levels, but he said there may be a period of profit-taking following an NVIDIA AI conference that begins on March 18th. Now, to Kathy Wood's point, I've talked about this before here on the channel as well, for these companies that are plowing money into these GPUs, they're expecting to obviously see that as an investment, right? If you put... $10 billion, if you're meta, let's say, you put $10 billion into NVIDIA GPUs, you're going to expect to make $15, 20 $30 billion from that investment. If that is not how things start to play out, then you will start to see investments slow down in AI infrastructure. And that's all this is infrastructure. If companies do not start to see some returns from their AI in infrastructure investments, I mean, what would you do? You would stop investing or slow down investing in that area. Thus, semiconductors trading at these valuations that are implying multiple years of strong growth could be in trouble. In fact, long before you actually see a slowdown in investments into GPU AI hardware, you'll likely see the stocks taking a hit as you start to get more analysts that are forecasting a slowdown in investments. So I do think Kathy Wood is justified in this caution around NVIDIA and other stocks. And unfortunately, well, AI stocks have been the main reason why the S&P continues to hit new all-time highs. So if you get a pullback or a reset in your AI stocks, as we'll talk about throughout this video, that could be an even larger problem for the S&P itself. So first and foremost, you have Broadcom. Broadcom is down about 3%. You still need to hear a little bit more from the company on the earnings call, and anything can happen on earnings calls. You're going to get a little bit more clarity, a little bit more details on things. So be on the lookout for that. Overall, Broadcom reported strong revenue, 
strong EPS coming in higher than Wall Street's expectations. EPS came in at $10.99 for the first quarter, and the consensus was $10.40. So they beat there by almost 60 cents. Revenue came in at $11.96 billion, above expectations of $11.8 billion. I'll point out that with when the stock has went from $600 to $1,400, just basically coming in line with expectations on revenue, Revenue or pretty close to it, that's not that impressive. But the reason why Broadcom is actually down in after hours is because Broadcom gave full year revenue guidance of $50 billion, which is roughly in line with the street consensus of $49.8 billion. Again, it's just not impressive. And for stocks that are pricing in a lot of growth with hefty valuations, investors want to be impressed. So is this bad? Of course not. But it's not Nvidia. It's not a you know blowout guidance. It's not blowout you know earnings or anything along those lines. So it's just okay. Now Marvel was the real loser here. Marvel is currently down about eight percent in after hours. Again, this could shake out to be a lot lower coming tomorrow morning. We'll really have to wait and see. But for the fiscal first quarter, Marvel projects revenue of one point fifteen billion at the midpoint, while analysts tracked by FactSet had been looking for one point three eight billion. So that's kind of a a. a big guy down. The company also expects adjusted earnings per share of 18 to 28 cents, while the fact set consensus was for 41 cents. So yeah, they missed on guidance on both revenue and on EPS. Now, parts of Marvel's business are doing good, where others are not. Overall revenue was 1.43 billion, up 1% from a year before and roughly in line with the fact set consensus which was for 1.42 billion so only up one percent year over year on revenue i mean and the stock's trading at all-time highs up over a hundred percent from where it was a year ago uh, is that justifying where the stock is at probably not marvell posted a 392.7 million dollar net loss equating to 45 cents a share for the fiscal fourth quarter a year before it lost 15.4 million or two cents per share so losses widening not the greatest guidance and yeah your stocks i'm surprised it's not down more than eight percent here and after hours now this was in the grand scope of things kind of in line with my expectations i did not expect some kind of disaster or failure from broadcom or marvell but the expectations were so high i figured the stocks were probably going to fall after earnings and it looks like that is what is going on here and this could throw a little cold water on the ai trade here and after hours tesla stock is falling about a third of one percent in sympathy but you gotta remember here the money has been sucked into these ai stocks most notably nvidia smci intel dell broadcom marvell all of these other semiconductor names asml all kinds of different other stocks out there and if you start to get those stocks that actually falling, you could see money go into other areas of the markets again, like a Tesla. I believe Tesla would be a big beneficiary of a reset, some red days, if you will, for AI stocks, but also your small and mid cap stocks as well. Right now, there is $6.2 trillion sitting in money market funds. That is three NVIDIAs. That is three uh, Russell 2000s. And it's not coming back into the markets anytime soon. And when you're watching a stock like NVIDIA going up 25 to $50 billion in market cap value basically every single day, where's that money coming from? Well, it's coming from other areas of the markets like Tesla. And I think that's a big reason why Tesla has done so poorly in 2024. It's not deemed an AI stock. It's in a quote unquote struggling industry right now perceivably evs are going to be struggling in 2024 i think that's yet to be seen if anything there's strong indications tesla will do just fine and beat expectations in 2024 but right now over the past two or three months or so 
Yeah, you've seen a lot of selling of Tesla and a lot of that money directly going into Nvidia and these other AI stocks. So you are seeing Tesla down a third of 1% here in after hours. I do believe this could turn out to be a positive catalyst for Tesla stock, but we are going to get some data coming out tomorrow morning that will be very important. That data will be your non-farm payrolls for the month of February, expecting this to come in at about 200,000 job ads. Now, a lot of people chalked up January's 353,000 job ads to seasonal adjustments to, you know, seasonal factors that that made the number look so good. Well, for February, you're expecting 200,000 job ads. That's still a really good freaking number. If you come in even higher than that, it's going to be hard to make a case that the Fed is going to cut rates anytime soon. Now, if you whiff on this number, maybe you come in at 100,000 job ads. Well, maybe you could make the case that the Fed should be cutting rates sooner. So what the markets have done recently is bad news has been good news. Good news has been bad news. So good news would be if the non-farms come in at 250,000. That would be good news. The economy is doing well. That's great news. Stocks would probably sell off on that. Vice versa, if jobs come in at 100,000 or 50,000, well, that would probably be seen as, you know, good news for the markets. Bad economic data, bad news for the economy, good news for the markets. So higher than 200,000, just to put this simply, stocks probably sell off. Lower than 200,000, stocks probably rally. But I think it is safe to say, for the most part, you have seen probably a front running of this data already. I think with the S&P sitting at about 515 for SPY, hitting a new all-time high even today, you've priced in a lot of good news. It is totally possible that you get a sell the fact kind of react reaction to any number that we get tomorrow morning. You are also going to get the unemployment rate. This is expected to remain unchanged at 3.7%. The unemployment rate can do some, some weird things. Sometimes it'll spike big um, or, or drop big, but it tends to spike big, if anything. Take a look from July of 2023. Unemployment rate was 3.5%. It jumped to 3.8%. Back here in April of 2023, it was 3.4%. It jumped to 3.7%. So you can get big jumps higher. You don't tend to see big falls, but that's also a possibility. This would be the fourth month in a row staying at 3.7% unemployment maybe you do see a large move tomorrow and kind of the same logic there if this number goes higher that's probably going to be good news for the markets if this number goes lower that may be bad news for the markets but i want you guys to remember this no matter how the markets interpret data in the short term whether you you know they look at a lower unemployment rate as bad or if they look at a higher unemployment rate as good news and stocks rally on that remember you don't want to see the unemployment rate rise. You don't want to get closer to a recession, ultimately. Ultimately, a recession is where you get a crash in the market. So especially if you are older, looking to retire in the next couple of years, the next maybe even five years, 10 years, you really don't want to see a recession. So anytime the markets sell off on good economic data, it could be a buying opportunity. Now, I'm staying far away from the S&P and the NASDAQ as of right now because they've already priced in you know, next year's worth of earnings. If there's any surprises there, if the economy does get worse, there is quite a bit of room to, uh, to, to fall here on the markets. And unfortunately, even with that being said, we do have a big catalyst coming next week. I think it's safe to say that a lot of this rally we have seen in the S&P 500 has been due to your AI stocks and the just FOMO activity you have seen in these names. They have really helped to drive the markets higher. I believe Nvidia has added 2% almost 2% to the S&P 500's uh, year-to-date performance alone. That's a huge number for one stock to have contributed. As I have mentioned before, when AI stocks sell off, whether they have bad earnings or whatever the reason is, a downgrade for that matter, which you haven't seen a lot of that recently, it tends to have a negative effect on all of them. Because I don't think a lot of people realize this, but I don't think a lot of people are rushing into buy NVIDIA at $925 per share. Probably not. I mean, some people might be, but for the most part, they're probably not. 90 to 95% of the trading volume that you see on any given day 
is algorithms and quants. So Tesla, for an example, had 101 and a half million shares trade hands today. That was the volume. Odds are about 90%, maybe 95% of that was uh, algorithms, right? Uh, trading programs, quantum computers that were doing that trading. If you have 101 million for volume, maybe 11 million or so, 10 million or so were people that were actually buying or selling Tesla stock. Now, this number is obviously going to vary day by day. But point is, when you know one stock sells off in a sector that is so hot, it can also have a negative impact on other stocks also in that sector. So the big event coming next week for your AI stocks is obviously the SoftBank arm lockup um, expiration. So, I mean, th there's a lot of people that push back on this, but I, th I, th I think you have to be lacking some brain cells to think that SoftBank is not going to sell anything. Now, do they sell on March 12th? I don't know. Do they sell on the 13th? I don't know. But if you look at any of the numbers here, it's not going to turn out good for ARM stock. No reason why, no wonder why ARM continues to go higher and, and hold up their uh, post earnings gain because 90% of the stock is held up and is unable to be traded. SoftBank owns 90%, 90.5% of ARM. They own 929 million shares or so. There's only about 94 million shares that are trading hands right now. So you could be looking at a thousand percent dilution if SoftBank wanted to sell their whole position. Now, they're probably not going to, but SoftBank bought ARM for $32 billion back in 2016. They took it private and they recently IPO'd it, but they tried to sell it to NVIDIA for $40 billion to only net about $8 billion on that bet. Now... Their ARM position is worth substantially more than the entire company value of SoftBank. SoftBank has a market cap of about $89 billion. If you just do some simple math here, 929.7 million shares that they own of ARM with ARM trading at about $137 currently, that's $127.3 billion in the ARM position alone. It's, it's worth more than the entire value of SoftBank, which never ends well. If this ever happens, like with any other company, it's never going to end well. And if you want to invest in the company, you got to wait until uh, the, the, the selling gets done. Okay, because there will be selling. The problem here is the way that I see it is even if SoftBank were to sell half of 1% of their position, um, I totally did the math wrong there half of one percent of their position that would that would be millions and millions of shares about four and a half million shares that SoftBank would sell when arm is trading about 15 million shares a day if you have them even come in on the 12th of next week and sell half of one percent of their position four and a half million shares that's going to be a lot of selling pressure on the stock I, I just don't see any good way out of this for ARM unless there's like a couple hundred thousand shares that are sold every day. Um, maybe you could get out of, you know, your position without too much damage incurring to SoftBank. But you're looking at hundreds of percents of uh, dilution, essentially, when SoftBank does sell their uh, position. And it's not like SoftBank has been doing well. Take a look at this. It says SoftBank backed medical genetics company in Vite prepares for bankruptcy um uh we work one of their biggest bets in the history of softbank about 14 billion dollars in that bet well we work just went bankrupt in november and then the ceo of uh softbank is trying to raise a hundred billion dollars for an ai chip venture to pretty much rival nvidia where are they going to get a lot of that money from probably their arm position right they're going to have to put up some collateral People are not just going to give you $100 billion. You got to put up some money too. And SoftBank just swung back to profitability. So it, they, they're not really in the best financial position. I mean, just look at SoftBank stock. I mean, in 2021, it was 50 bucks. Today, it's 
$30.79. And that's even after their arm position has become massively su successful. If that wasn't the case, the stock would probably be, you know, under $20 per share like it was back, you know, before the AI hype in uh, 2023 where the stock was regularly uh, you know, 18, 19, 16 dollars or so. So uh, yeah, there's no way that ends good. If you do get a lot of selling pressure on ARM, that could cause a lot of selling pressure on Nvidia, on your other stocks, which in turn could be a positive for Tesla. Because if we could just get a reset to your AI stocks and get some red in that area, a lot of money likely comes back into Tesla. But at the same time, you probably get a pullback in the broader markets if the air starts to come out of the AI bubble. Now, a couple different things that are important to note. If nothing changes, if the economy just continues to do okay, if inflation continues to kind of do what it's doing and you don't see a big spike or anything, then you can make the argument that maybe the air coming out of the AI bubble would be good for other areas of the markets. Now, if air comes out of the AI bubble at the same time, maybe the unemployment rate spikes big tomorrow or, or falls big tomorrow, or we have another existential reason um, to sell off stocks, then it's not going to be such a positive. Now, in, from my perspective, coming next week, it probably does start a correction like event. Maybe tomorrow morning does with the data. I don't know. But I do think you're you're probably likely to get about a 5% pullback here in the markets. A 5% pullback roughly from here would put the S&P back to about its 50-day moving average at about 490. Is that really a correction? Not really, but it is kind of in the grand scope of this market. 5% pullback hasn't happened in a while. Now, if you fall more like 7%, which would be a much better kind of correction, really let things kind of reset a little bit, um, that would take you back to about uh, 478. That would be 7% lower on the S&P. That would still be, I mean, a decent ways higher than your previous all-time high that would still be about two and a half percent above your 2021 uh well, early 2022 all-time high that you've seen in the market so i do think we're we're due for a correction either way you want to put it and the ai stocks the arm lockup period next week the fact that broadcom and marvell are down here in after hours uh nvidia is now up almost one percent uh, which which is uh, strange. Maybe that just highlights the uh, uh, how good Nvidia is. These other stocks are uh, selling off. So we'll see how this ultimately shakes out in the markets. It's it's gonna get maybe pretty weird here. But yeah, you could see how some weakness here in AI stocks could start to cause a little bit of selling in our markets. Now I think the big question that all of you guys are gonna have here is where does this take Tesla stock? Now, again, if nothing changes, if AI stocks just fall and capital can broaden out into other areas of our markets, then let's say you do get a 5% pullback in the S&P. Maybe Tesla falls a little bit or just trades sideways. It doesn't necessarily have to fall if your AI stocks like a Microsoft, your other big tech stocks are falling. You can see Tesla outperform at that point. And that's kind of my base case assumption. Now, if something else were to break out there, if something else were to go awry, like tomorrow's non-farm payroll report or something else, then you could be looking at some downside about 165. If that did not hold, if something really truly goes wrong in our markets and you start to get a 10, 15% correction event, maybe SoftBank dumps 20 or 30% of their position and a uh, uh, arm collapses back to like 70 bucks i mean who knows what the ultimate catalyst could be i would target that 150 level 150 looks like a very comfortable ultimate bottom for 2024 and let's be honest that's 27 dollars away from where we currently are i think you need to be mentally prepared for tesla to fall to 150 as a long-term investor um you know I, I don't know what your specific plans are, but as a long-term investor, generally speaking, I'm speaking to the long-term investor here, you shouldn't worry about, you know, how low Tesla goes. The lower Tesla goes, the more people get bearish, the easier it will be for Tesla to surprise 
to the upside. And the more shares you can acquire at cheaper prices, ultimately you make money when you buy a stock, not when you sell a stock. So the lower the price goes, the more I buy, the more probably you guys buy and the more money you ultimately make on the back end of that when Tesla does start to do better towards later in 2024 as the Fed starts to cut rates as we apparently don't go into a recession. I mean, financing costs come down for Tesla's more people are able to afford them. You get closer to the next gen vehicle. I mean, there is a lot of positives ahead. We just heard that FSD is potentially about to launch in Europe. We already know FSD should be launching in China pretty soon. Those are also big catalysts that I don't think are priced into Tesla stock at all. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. What is your expectations for the data coming out tomorrow? Do you think it's going to be a rough data report? you know, from the non-farms, what, what is your expectation? You'll also get average hourly earnings, participation rate, manufacturing payrolls, uh, private payrolls, U6 unemployment rate, all kinds of secondary data as well. And then coming out tomorrow in after hours at about 8.30 p.m., well, technically when the markets are closed for trading, you will get the inflation rate out of China. That could also be important, um, but it is Friday and stocks, well, aren't going to trade over the weekend. So we might react to that on monday if you guys would like to come trade with us live in real time check out that link down below in the description of this video thank you for watching enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you in the next one